Serious. What do you think is the creepiest, most disturbing, unsolved mystery ever? Part 1. Now just relax and enjoy. Also, if you like, please subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. The Ibadan Forest of Horror in Nigeria. A local taxi driver goes missing and his friends create a makeshift search party and investigate a forest. Instead of finding their friend, they find an abandoned school, or factory, that have the remnants of a hellish torture, murder, ritual killing, and human trafficking. Eight survivors were rescued, numerous body parts, rotting corpses, and personal artifacts were found. The perpetrators were never found, although local politicians and ritualists were suspects. Whilst this discovery is disturbing, the mystery for me is that the original taxi driver still hasn't been found. Account 2. I am an avid unresolved mysteries reader, and I don't know why it has stuck with my, but Carly Guse, 16-year-old girl called her stepmother to pick her up from a party, reportedly was too scared to sleep because she thought someone would kill her, and the next day she disappeared. There were some weird interviews and dynamics between step-parents and birth parents and a bunch of theories abound. Account 3. The Disappearance of Zeb Quinn he was 18 years old when he went missing in 2000, was working his shift at a local Walmart, and afterwards wanted to look at a new car with a colleague, when he allegedly received a call that made him take off frantically. After that, he was never seen again. The strangest thing is that a few days later, his car was found in a parking lot, with the headlights turned on, a pair of lips and an exclamation mark drawn on the back window in pink lipstick, and a live Labrador puppy sitting inside, in 2017, the colleague was arrested for his murder, but all the strange details still make no sense at all. Account 4. The disappearance of Lars Mittank, a German man who went on vacation in Bulgaria in 2014. He was last seen at the airport where he was brought into a private room by airport security after his mother had called, telling them her son was behaving strangely, saying there were people after him over the phone the night before. A few minutes later, he's seen bolting. And I mean full-on sprinting out of the room without his luggage. He ran out of airport, scaled the huge fences around the perimeter, and was never seen again. Hundreds of witnesses, CCTV footage, and a police presence, and the man still basically disappeared off the face of the earth in broad daylight. Account 5. Firstly, the murder of John Bonet Ramsey. Just the idea that her own parents might have done it is disturbing especially considering the circumstances, and also the Keddie Cabin murders. Not only did the 14-year-old daughter of one of the victims find them tied up and stabbed to death, three more kids were still asleep in the bedroom, having no idea what had happened. Account 6. A lesser, known one that sticks with me, is Selena Mays. 12 years old, 9 months pregnant, disappears from her room overnight, she didn't bring any belongings with her, and neither she or the baby have ever been found. Her dad and his family were involved with a shady church, but there's no proof they know what happened to her. The obvious theory is that her baby's father killed her and hid the body to avoid statutory rape charges, but nobody knows, or will admit to knowing, anyhow, who he was. Account 7. Jessica Chambers. She was set on fire in her car and had gasoline poured down her throat. Paramedics found her walking down the lane on fire. The only part of her body that wasn't burned was the bottom of her feet. She did not survive. Police found a suspect but did not have enough evidence to charge him. Paramedics were so traumatized by what they saw, they had to go through therapy and broke down on stage during interviews. She tried to name her attacker, but her throat was so destroyed she couldn't be understood. Account 8. The murder of Robert Wone is something I think about often. He was with friends, just staying the night, and what happened to him sounds brutal. Even more disturbing to me is the fact that everyone who was in that house that evening seemingly have a pact of silence and are walking around free as a bird. Account 9. Missy Bevers. A suspect in full SWAT armor breaks into a church and smashes windows and breaks open doors with a hammer, looking for a local fitness instructor. They then find and beat her to death before getting away. There is high-quality surveillance video of both them and their car, but investigators couldn't make out the license plate. 
There has been a suspect who was cleared because of an alibi, and there's been no recent updates. Account 10. Elizabeth Barraza murder. She was murdered in her driveway in the early morning by a person looked to be disguised as a woman. Grainy security footage and no answers. Account 11. As a diver, I find the disappearance of Ben McDaniels to be super interesting. They say he went into a cave and never came out, but some the world's top cave divers looked for him and never found a body. The only evidence that he went diving were staged gas bottles, but they were filled with normal air, not any sort of mixture or anything. The owner of Vortex Springs, where Ben went missing, also died mysteriously the year after. Account 12. The murder of Lindsay Buziak, a case close to home for me that I don't see mentioned as much as it should. A relatively junior realtor in Victoria, British Columbia is showing a luxury home to some clients, and the clients murdered her. The clients, a man and a woman, cold, called her saying they needed to find something to buy ASAP. She was apprehensive of showing the property by herself and asked that her boyfriend come or wait outside or something. Turns out the boyfriend was running late and arrived around as the murder just occurred, but I don't believe he saw anything as the suspects fled through the back door. It's believed that she was the victim of a professional hit for some unknown reason. Also, the cell phone that was used to contact her was purchased by someone with an alias in Vancouver 6 or so months prior and was only ever used to contact her. Account 13 Las Cruces Bowling Alley Massacre, in February 1990 in Las Cruces, New Mexico, two intruders entered the bowling alley through an unlocked door before opening time. The cook, Ida Holgan, was forced by one gunman to go to the office where Stephanie Senak, her 12-year-old daughter, Melissa Repass, and Melissa's 13-year-old friend, Amy Hauser, were being held by the other gunman. The women and girls were forced to lie on the ground while the gunman stole from a safe, the alley's pin mechanic, Steve Tarrin, arrived at the alley with his daughters, six-year-old Paula and two-year-old Valerie, who he'd been unable to find a babysitter for. The gunman then shot everyone. The gunman haphazardly set fire to the office, but it didn't burn much. After they left, 12-year-old Melissa was able to call the police despite being shot five times. She and the cook would survive their wounds. Melissa's mother, Stephanie Senak, would initially survive, but would succumb to complications nine years later. Two-year-old Valerie would survive long enough to be taken to the hospital, but died there. The gunmen have never been identified after the incident. Stephanie Senak's father, Ronald Senak, who I believe owned the bowling alley and was out of state at the time of the killings, didn't cooperate with authorities some believe that the killings might have been a targeted hit in retaliation against Ronald for something he did. Account 14. Timothy Pitson, a kid who was taken from school by his mother, went to a zoo, a water park, and all those fun places a kid would love, and then went missing after his mother killed herself in response to her rocky marriage. She left a suicide note saying sorry and that Timothy would be safe but never found. Pretty sad considering that the father still believes he's out there, but I'm betting he's dead. Lived close to where it happened too, but not when it initially happened. Account 15. In my opinion, it's the City of San Francisco train derailment that occurred in Hardin, NV, on 8th December 1939. The train, run by the Southern Pacific Railroad at the time, derailed at a bridge over the Humboldt River at a speed range of 60-90 miles per hour. The accident resulted in 24 fatalities and multiple injuries. Days later, investigators discovered tools at the bottom of the Humboldt River, determining that the wreck was caused by sabotage of the rails.